Hello, my name is Sophia Medizra, and I will be presenting today on behalf of myself and Dr. Grace Leslie on our project, Novel Methodologies for Secondary Analyses of Physiological and Musical Preference Data. First, I'd like to quickly introduce ourselves. I'm a second year master's student at the Georgia Institute of Technology, studying music technology, and I'm part of the Brain Music Lab. Dr. Grace Leslie is an assistant professor at the Georgia Institute of Technology School of Music and director of the Brain Music Lab. Our lab is part of Georgia Tech's Center for Music Technology, so the main focus of our research tends to be music perception and cognition and neuroscience work, as well as integrating new technologies and creative practices. This past year during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, uh, we've been impacted in our ability to run human subject studies and collect new data. So our lab has been placing greater emphasis on conducting secondary analyses on existing publicly available data sets. We believe these types of secondary analyses can be very quick and efficient ways of testing hypotheses, exploring multiple questions, and helping to plan further data collection. With that comes the need for new secondary analysis methods for data types that are relevant to music cognition research, such as behavioral and physiological data. With one of my personal research interests being musical preferences, I was particularly interested in seeing if we could use existing music cognition data sets in this way to ask questions about musical preferences and our responses to preferred music. It's been shown that preferred music plays an important role in our personal, social, and emotional well being, in addition to being capable of inducing emotions that are accompanied by psychophysiological responses. That being said, our goal here was to present a feasibility report of conducting this preference focused analysis on a data set that was not originally designed to answer these questions. In particular, we wanted to see um, what new questions about musical preference could be asked about existing music perception data sets and what new methodologies might be required to do so. In particular, looking at behavioral or metadata and physiological data. To begin exploring these questions, we needed to find an existing data set to serve as a case study. And for this, we chose the Study Forest data set. This is a publicly available data set published about six years ago now out of the Psychoinformatics Lab at University Magdeburg in Germany. From this data set, we chose to analyze the auditory perception task, which had a group of 20 participants listen to 25 six second long music clips from five different genres of music. The provided data here includes seven Tesla fMRI, respiratory traces, and pulse oximetry data, which includes oxygen saturation and photoplethysmogram, or PPG, in other words, uh, pulse information. Participants were also asked to self-report their musical preferences in a pre-study questionnaire. And although the fMRI from this data set has been analyzed quite extensively in past studies, we were intrigued by the physiological data, in other words, the cardiac and respiratory information in this data set, in addition to the musical preference information. And we believe that there were some additional areas that um, could be explored here, making this a good choice for our feasibility case study. The main question that we wanted to try and ask of this data was, do participants' musical preferences affect their physiological responses to the stimuli? So with this question, we came up with two areas of study. The first was to analyze participants' physiological data that was collected during the presentation of these stimuli with respect to their musical preferences. And the second was to analyze participants' physiological response alongside features or characteristics of the stimuli themselves. In other words, we wanted to have a multifaceted approach where we analyzed the relationships in this data set between physiology and both subjective and objective features of the musical stimuli. Again, this was something that we were asking of a data set originally collected for some other purpose. So we realized that we would need to develop two sets of methodologies. The first involves defining and calculating participants' musical preferences. Like I previously mentioned, the information that we had in this data set was all on the basis of self-report and they were never directly asked to rate their liking for the stimuli. So we had to develop some method of characterizing or quantifying musical preference based on the given information so that we could then estimate preference for the stimuli. The second method has to do with calculating participants' physiological response. Apart from selecting the appropriate metrics for this, which I will discuss later, we would need a physiological baseline or resting period data for each participant. In this study, um, physiological data were truncated in, to the beginning and end of the experimental runs with no initial baseline period included. So we would need a method for calculating or inferring an alternative baseline by which we could standardize each participant's response. 
In terms of the first set of methods, we decided to quantify and generalize musical preference based on Renfro and colleagues Stomp R or the revised short test of musical preferences. Stomp provides a way to translate genre labels, which may be ill-defined or subjective, into other high-level attributes that are genre-free. This is done through assigning a normalized score or loading on each of five factors, mellow, unpretentious, sophisticated, intense, and contemporary. Together, these five factors fittingly make up the acronym MUSIC, and this MUSIC five-factor model is something that I'll refer to a lot later in the presentation. STOMP has been used and validated extensively in the field, and it seemed like a good tool to use here in order to translate our participants' subjective characterizations of their music taste to something more generalizable that we could then relate with the stimuli in the experiment. And this is an example of how this worked. The pre-study questionnaire gave us information like this. Participant six likes rock, metal, electro, and jazz, and listens to White Stripes, Biffy Claro, Muse, etc. All of the participants provided genres are coded in terms of Stomp R genres, giving each genre a set of five factor loadings from Stomp R. Each of these genres can now be thought of as a point in this five dimensional Stomp space. Because there was a lot of variability in the number, if any, of favorite artists that each participant reported, we used the provided artists to validate the self-reported genres. The centroid of those five dimensional genre points is what we took as the representation of participant six's musical preference. We can then repeat this process for all 20 of the participants and represent each one of them as a point in this five-dimensional stomp space. What this method then allows us to do is to also perform this process for the five stimulus genres as well and represent each one of those genres similarly in the same space. Now we'll show the results of this a little later in the presentation. Um, but before that, I'll go into the second set of methods, which regards working with the physiological data. First, I'll briefly discuss the processing pipeline for this data. Both types, the cardiac and the respiratory, were pre-processed according to prior literature and methods before applying a peak detection algorithm so that we can identify breaths and heartbeats, respectively. Um, there were many potential metrics that could then be calculated from this. However, considering the rather short six-second stimulus presentation, we decided to limit uh, the analysis to time domain metrics only. And additionally, given that the cardiac data is pulse information from a PPG, we decided that the pulse rate and pulse rate variability were the most appropriate time domain metrics for this given uh, signal and time window. Finally, because there wasn't any resting period data that we could use as participants' physiological baselines, we would need to calculate an alternative physiological baseline to complete the analysis. We considered several methods for this, but ultimately made the decision at that point to go with the simplest option, which is to use the overall average as the baseline. This means that participants' average heart rate or respiration rate over the course of all eight of their repeated experimental runs is taken to be the baseline. With these methods in mind, I'll now discuss the results from the analysis, beginning with the musical preference calculation. Here's a visual representation of the five-dimensional stomp space. You'll see that each of the five music factors is mapped to either a spatial dimension or size or color. The bottom left panel shows all three of the spatial dimensions, while the other panels show different two-dimensional projections of these. The labeled points in the 2D projection panels are the five stimulus genres labeled by first letter, A for ambient, C for country, H for heavy metal, R for rock, and S for symphonic. The other unlabeled points are the 20 participants. Having the participants and the genres represented in the same space allowed us to estimate a participant's preference for each stimulus genre using a five-dimensional Euclidean distance, which we will refer to as a preference distance. Here's an example visualization of these preference distances for one participant shown here in the middle. The distances between this participant and the five stimulus genres are shown in 3D space by the dotted lines for visualization purposes, but the distance calculation is a five-dimensional distance. Our method results in a set of five preference distances, one per stimulus genre per participant, enabling us to estimate degree of preference for the stimuli, which is a critical metric facilitating the remainder of our analysis. This would theoretically mean that the smallest preference distance from each of the five stimulus genres would be the genre most likely preferred by that participant. So in this example here, heavy metal has the shortest preference, dis preference distance for participant eight, suggesting that they would be uh, most likely to prefer stimuli from this genre. 
So to summarize, uh, using the stomp R and the music five factor model, we found a way to uniquely represent individuals' preferences, as well as quantitatively and further preferences for unknown musical stimuli. So using our results from calculating musical preference, as well as our alternative physiological baseline, we could then start to analyze how degree of physiological response might correlate with participants' uh, preferences for the stimuli. Specifically, we predicted that we might see a positive correlation between degree of physiological response and preference. Um, we defined physiological response as a percent change using that alternative baseline from earlier. However, degree of physiological response here refers to the absolute percent change of these metrics. And this is to capture that regardless of if the preferred genre is more stimulatory or sedative in nature, the degree of the response is what we predicted will correlate with the preference. Quantitatively speaking, we were predicting to see some sort of multivariate relationship where preference is related to the absolute percent change in physiological metrics as shown in the equation here. Um, however, the multiple linear regression showed that the model that we had hypothesized was not a good fit for preference distance and none of the physiological metrics here were found to be significant terms. Uh, there are several possible interpretations of this null result. The first is that musical preference is a complex and highly individualized phenomenon. So although developing the preference distance metric was critical in order to perform this analysis, further studies would need to be done to determine the most accurate method for calculating preference distance. One potential limitation of the current method is that participants' preferences are represented by a single point, which is the centroid of their self-reports. Um, adjusting this method to capture more of the breadth of one's preferences may prove to be a more accurate estimate. Um, another possibility is that the physiological metrics analyzed given the data that we had were not optimal selections for this particular question. And finally, the stimuli in the study were researchers selected and past research has demonstrated the connection between familiarity and preference for music. So it is possible that the stimuli were maybe too unfamiliar or generally did not produce a strong enough or measurable response from the participants. Um, we can also analyze how physiological response might correlate with musical characteristics. And here we predicted that participants' physiological response might correlate with how mellow or intense the stimuli are, according to the stomp R and the music model factor loadings that we saw earlier. Um, we chose to focus on these two factors in particular because these can be more directly mapped to low-level psychoacoustic features like loudness or tempo, which have been found in other studies to correlate with levels of arousal. More specifically, we predicted negative and positive correlations with physiological arousal for mellow and intense factors, respectively. Um, from here, we ran a repeated measures ANOVA test where the data were grouped by stimulus genre and arranged an order from highest to lowest mellow factor loading. And the order for intense here was the same but reversed. Uh, the test was repeated for each of the physiological measures mentioned earlier, and we found no significant effect here on the percent change in heart rate or heart rate variability. However, there was a significant effect on percent change in breathing rate, which can be seen here in the figure. We also did a subsequent regression analysis, which confirmed that this effect could not be completely explained by mimicking or entrainment to the stimulus tempo. Uh, these results suggest that participants' breathing was perhaps affected to a greater degree than their heart rate in this study. And furthermore, it points to this being a unconscious effect of higher level features in the musical stimuli. This aligns with prior literature identifying breathing as an autonomic function that can also be affected by music during both focused and unfocused listening. Um, so to conclude, through, the case uh, through this case study on the study forest data set, we found that uh, given genre information, we can ask questions about individuals' musical preferences and their physiological responses to experimental stimuli. To this end, we present a novel methodology for quantitatively estimating preference for unknown musical stimuli through the application of the revised short test of musical preferences and the music five-factor model. This preference distance metric, as well as the alternative physiological baseline calculation, was critical in facilitating our exploration of the study forest data set, and with further development could increase visibility of performing these post hoc analyses on publicly available musical perception data. We also contributed an analysis of breathing rate over a range of, music, of musical genres demonstrating the influence of higher level features of music on respiration and highlighting the roles that such features may be able to play in controlled breathing practices, as well as potential implications for other related autonomic activities like heart rate and heart rate variability. 
This result is particularly remarkable since it is both supported by prior literature and was also observed through the secondary analysis of a data set whose primary studies were unrelated. In future work, we intend to expand our methods by applying our novel preference metric to newly collected data. Thank you to lis for listening to our presentation and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.